Well, what's happening is I'm here in Austin for the Paleo FX convention. Um, it's been amazing. This is the third day. Uh, thousands of people showing up for this. It's really impressive to see what's happened to the paleo community and how it's grown and how it's flourished and how not just the people who are attending, but the vendors. That's really what I find most hmm. fascinating is the fact that we're creating basically a marketplace now with products and, and uh, services that cater to specifically to a paleo lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, man, it's crazy. So Paleo Effects started four years ago in Austin and it was small and you were at the first one. Yeah. You, it, and like now it's, it's huge if you guys have not been there. In fact, I haven't attended. I actually have a press pass, but I didn't you get to go, it. I was here yeah. interviewing people, but, <laughs> but no, man. And it's just nuts because it's this huge cultural phenomenon. But you actually started like this movement massively, you know, with actually the Primal Blueprint, which we see right here. How have you seen paleo change and evolve over the years? Uh, yeah, it has evolved. Um, you know, it started really well before I got into this uh, through the likes of uh, some of the people doing work in, um, in the 80s. Um, uh, Mel Connor, Boyd Eaton wrote some of the first books, uh, really looking at the Paleolithic diet. Um, Lauren Cordain came in in the early 2000s and started looking deeper into that. Uh, it was one of the impetus that I used to change my own diet. And, and I'd, I'd gone down this route I, where I'd uh, started to, to be accepting of uh, healthy fats, um, uh, the concept that less uh, exercise is probably an appropriate uh, lifestyle for me. Um, I looked at a lot of these different hunter-gatherer experiences, and the last thing to fall into place for me was the elimination of grains. And I got a lot of that from, from the guys I just mentioned. So I started writing about this in 2006, and um, that's when I started my blog. Um, I started to write, uh, and I th figured I'd write every, every day for a year, and at the end of a year I'd, I'd have written everything there is to say about uh, <laughs> life and, and, and diet and exercise and health and fitness and whatnot. And Of course, um, that wasn't exactly an accurate statement because at the end of a year I just started digging deeper and deeper into these nuances and these different paths that we could explore. And, and uh, so it became Mark's Daily Apple. And, and, you know, when you say, um, you know, you credit me with, with having uh, advanced this movement, I'd like to think so. I'd like to think that, that my blog has taken what other guys have done and kind of brought it a little bit more mainstream. Um, I, I, I pride myself on the way I write and the ability to take complex scientific um, ideas and, and translate them into a way that appeals mm. to the mainstream reader who wants to just, like, get the nuggets, give me the information, just tell me what I got to do. So, so you touched on some of the, the Boyd Eatons of the world who were kind of preceding you. And I can even think of back in the early 70s, a guy by the name of um, Stefan Boyden, who's an Australian, yeah. you know, yeah. human ecology, writing about this stuff. And yet there seems to be a lineage at least 50 years talking about this stuff, if not even earlier to the early home economics. Was There's a grain in there. There's a germ in there about like, here's the stuff you do in your life and home and sleep and some of what you even dig backwards even further into with the Primal Connection. Why does it seem like it's so hard for people to get on board with this idea? Because it's not like it's not like you're the first person to say this. No, that's exactly right. Right. I mean, it's, no. and there's a whole academics the, 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 uh, dis discipline de dedicated to this stuff. So it's like, you know, it's I, and I would agree that that um, I'm just repackaging ideas that have been around for a long time, and uh, I'm trying to put them into a framework that is accessible to the average person. So. Yeah, these are, these are concepts that we sort of intuitively all get. Yeah, we should be eating real food and not packaged food. We should probably be getting you know, enough sleep. We should probably be going to sleep a little earlier and not waking up to an alarm clock. We probably should be getting more sun and playing out in nature and, 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 and digging around in the dirt. But you know, we, the, fighting that whole movement is this uh, science and technology and advancement in you know, interactive digital technology and all these things that are sort of taking our minds that are hardwired to be hunter-gatherers, taking them in a direction of short attention span. Um, you know, uh, Instagram and Facebook weren't enough. Now it's got to be Snapchat. It's got to be, it's, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, some, you know, the six-second video concept. It's like that six seconds is enough time to get the message across. Seriously? I mean, so, so we've, here we are trying to uh, encourage people to spend more time cooking their food and shopping for their food and eating and enjoying their food. So the concept of fast food kind of flies out the window, and yet society is pushing fast food on us. Here we are trying to encourage people to spend time face-to-face. -face. I'm hanging out with you guys. This is awesome. We're looking at each other. We're not doing a Skype chat, you know? Right. Uh, and, and yet 
the technology is set up for us to, to do, you know, for six kids to sit in a room and all be fi- focused on their, <laughs> on their devices, you know, texting each other. It's, um, it's, so while we're hardwired to, to, um, to extract the greatest amount of pleasure out of life, sometimes we perceive that pleasure as being instant gratification. And so it's, it's, I'm just trying to tell people, look, let's just really, if, if we're here to experience joy and pleasure and contentment and fulfillment, let's figure out ways that do that, that, that resonate with our genes, that resonate with our hunter-gatherer brains, uh, and that don't rely on digital technology, but, but you know, cause us to have to go back to face-to-face communication, real food, getting sleep instead of figuring out hacks so that we don't have to sleep. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, the, the whole biohacker community is kind of funny, right? Because it, I, think, I think we have gone so far off the path that we need hacks to kind of grease the skid to yeah. get us back to where we should have been in the first place.